Hey, welcome to the Lux channel. So often uh, whenever I conduct uh, sessions uh, with my students, especially Indian students, uh, okay, uh, time to time uh, they do attend uh, any uh, job interviews and uh, they discuss about a few questions uh, they have asked. Uh, and uh, apart from few interesting ones, uh, I also hear, uh, you know, uh, these networking companies, especially the Indian companies, ask some very, you know, common uh, dumb questions. So some of the questions uh, which may include... Um, uh, like uh, they ask often uh, some difference between uh, what is a port versus uh, the difference between an interface uh, and sometimes they ask uh, the ports of a network switch versus uh, any NIC card and stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> you know, in a way it is a kind of a dumb question because uh, if you think about the question about uh, port and interface, uh, absolutely you can use any term. I mean, it all depends on what type of context you use. So when you consider any, uh, you know, uh, system interfaces, uh, usually interfaces is something we can call it as something which is associated with respect to software, uh, uh, you know, network interfaces. Uh, so these interfaces, you can create any number of them, okay, any virtual interfaces you can create. So sometimes you may not be that often finding a jargon in a book. Uh, let's uh, take for instance uh, Linux dri drivers, uh, Linux uh, device drivers, uh, LDD book. You may, you know, uh, never encounter a term called as uh, virtual uh, ports. Instead, you may find usually they mention as virtual interfaces and stuff. So that way if you do, you know, this thing, uh, if you do if config, you can see there, you know, one is the, you know, physical uh, port. So you have a net device instance is, you know, created in the kernel space. So you get one interface. Uh, okay. After that, you have a virtual interface, which is the loopback interface. And there is another virtual interface, like a virtual bridge and stuff. So similarly, uh, you can think anything as a port if it is something like a hardware stuff. But it's just a vague, you know, idea. I mean, you can use any name. It doesn't matter. And uh, these idiots, uh, when they conduct any interviews, uh, you know, this, uh, I often see this uh, and also discussed in all my videos. They just conduct in some mediocre way. They just want to do this. Uh, they want to conduct one uh, 40 minutes round or half an hour round or 15 minutes round. And in that, uh, you know, stipulated time, they just want to assess some uh, expertise of the candidate, uh, what they are looking for. Uh, anyway, most of the times, uh, you know, no Indian companies will be anyway working on any research, nor they do any patents and stuff. They just need a very average, uh, mediocre guy who just fits for that role. And if a little bit uh, extraordinary, they don't want. And if he's, he's uh, kind of a dumb also, they don't want. They just need kind of an average performer and who can give an average answer by, uh, you know, preparing uh, before in hand, attending the interview somewhere in the internet and they just want someone to vomit actually. So they have done this uh, in all their life, especially in a country like us. Uh, they have done in all our examination, they just by heart and then vomit and then they secure a mark and then finally they move ahead and they expect same kind of a uh, nonsense, uh, you know, approach when it comes to interviews. You can call anything. I mean, you can call this as a port. You can call this as an interface. Doesn't matter. It's just a, you know, a channel through which you can send data. Okay. So, of course, you can create any number of uh, virtual interfaces for a physical port. You can <laughs> as well say this as a, you know, interface, a physical interface. It doesn't matter. Let's take instance, uh, this is a, a USB uh, to Ethernet uh, adapter or uh, you can take this uh, example like this on my you know tp link uh, uh, NIC card okay so this is a pci uh, pci express to gigabit ethernet NIC card uh, it uses a single lane or something like that because uh, it has a very small uh, pci uh, you know uh, interface over here so uh, so this is a very standard one. It's a very cheap NIC card you get often in Amazon or anywhere. Sometimes you may get with the four ports uh, NIC card. It can be used for uh, servers and, uh, you know, routing uh, routers and uh, stuff like that. You can make a Linux based router. You can make a, a PFSense uh, free BST based router using such NIC cards. Okay. So this, I bought it uh, for my NAS server, although I don't have any more uh, free PCIe slots. So I'm not using this. If I use this, I can configure as a, a link aggregation and bonding and I can create a 
bonded interface for multiple you know physical ports so you can use generally this term as anything to anywhere and i see often uh, these uh, you know idiotic uh, you know interview questions uh, they include uh, some question like this and uh, they don't know really how to judge a person's uh, you know uh, networking knowledge by asking something which is more sensible uh, and uh, it also uh, helps them to assess and evaluate the other person's knowledge rather than asking some dumb uh, textbook questions and uh, you know uh, and judging someone's uh, knowledge with that it's just because of these idiots which you will find in majority of the indian companies let them be any uh, foreign mncs once they establish here these guys will penetrate and ask these kind of mediocre questions okay if next time if you are in any interview if they ask any such dumb questions ask them to watch my channel and stop you know doing that nonsense okay ask something sensible they can ask several things they can ask about a network stack in linux kernel to an extent if you are working in user space to an extent they can ask about subnetting and various things anyway these idiots they don't know how to ask more important questions which at least is covered in ccna okay but uh, most of the times so when i see any developers they lack this uh, networking knowledge as i always mention uh, when i compare to sys admins they have extensive networking knowledge but they do don't have any programming knowledge versus if i see the programmers community they have excellent programming knowledge but they lack some extent of networking knowledge so they can ask questions like that they can ask about an architecture of a switch they can ask about architecture of a router this is some sensible question you can uh, judge somebody's uh, you know knowledge in that rather than asking some you know stupid dumb questions like this and uh, if not this sometimes they ask about a difference between a, a nic card uh, port versus a port in a router and port in a switch all this bullshit again it's a bullshit actually you can make anything into a switch you can uh, use a software uh, linux uh, software uh, bridge uh, which is in the kernel and you can make an entire switch uh, in uh, linux kernel <laughs> using that bridge control user space commands so with that you can make any system as a linux bridge i can make my pc as a network switch i can make this uh, laptop as a network switch but there is a difference if i use this laptop as a network switch its a data plane is in the software layer it's in the operating system uh, layer versus if i buy a d link uh, very cheap d link or uh, cisco switch or something like that then its uh, data plane is in the hardware layer and uh, you know packet forwarding packet processing happens in the hardware or the firmware versus if you use a linux system as a switch or some free bsd or something the packet processing happens in the operating system so it is going to add a lot of overhead you cannot achieve some wire speed performance uh, something like that with this type of approach but having said that you will still get fairly good amount of performance so you can um, have some adapter like this you can make your raspberry pi as a network switch you can make a raspberry pi as a network router something like that so it, it is perfectly feasible and uh, there is a difference always between something like that versus something you buy commercially okay especially the network routers if you buy uh the commercial ones so let it be tp link uh, like this or uh, i mean uh, let it be this brand like tp link or else uh, you buy xiaomi d link whatever it is uh, even netgear whatever they use uh, open wrt you know framework so through open wrt they make uh, they cook the operating system image and uh, you know they provide you the hardware so naturally packets will get processed in the operating system those, those are not any uh, expensive cisco routers or something like that so packets do get processed in the linux kernel and it is going to have some amount of operating system overhead of course so data plane will be in the os kernel so uh, these are the things which they can ask constructively in a you know job interview rather than you know asking some stupid question somebody must have had that faq page and they just borrow it and uh, no one have a time they just uh, you know give it to someone who is about to handle any networking uh, session i mean to say the uh, qa session uh, for a specific round and then he again asks the same kind of rubbish actually so due to this filthy stuff what happens is uh, everybody trend to you know learn these things which is absolutely doesn't make any sense you call this as a port you call it as a interface i call it as a whole it doesn't matter it is just a network uh, you know uh, interface okay it's just a net 
network channel through which you can send data and receive data that's more important and there are so many other things to learn uh, rather than you know uh, taking this quite serious and i still remember when i uh, long back attended an interview somewhere and uh, that guy was asking a difference between a line card and a nick card and he made a big fuss out of it actually i said yeah, anyway it doesn't matter you know line card you use it for um, uh, you know big uh, uh, you know network uh, uh, blade servers whatever it is it doesn't really matter it you know once it is exposed to the software layer everything appears as a you know uh, network uh, interface and moreover when you do user space coding sometimes you don't really need to care you do so uh, you know socket programming you do with the local host or else you do with the remote uh, systems uh, it doesn't matter packets go through this nick card it doesn't matter if packet goes through this nick card or something actually because anyway in user space you don't have any visibility uh, you do send the packets through wireless port you send the packets through some 4g uh, link or whatever it is it doesn't matter let it be ppp instead of ethernet it doesn't matter because it is anyway abstracted and if you are working on some kernel layer again if you are not working any device drivers uh, it really doesn't matter okay once you are inside the net folder of uh, linux kernel uh, it itself is a platform independent uh, uh, networking subsystem uh, you know we don't really care it is uh, actually of what type of hardware it is it's already abstracted all we see is a dev uh, you know uh, net device a dev name we see that okay if it is eth0 or eth1 or in this case like eno1 or loopback and we can see that it is originating from which port or it is destined to which port if it is a tx path and if it is an rx path we will know that it is coming from you know which port so you know that's all it is. so instead of focusing on that uh, these type of aspects they ask these kind of you know dumb questions uh, most of the times as i said uh, many times uh, these companies uh, they choose someone who don't have any projects who don't have any work to sit in that interview panel and these kind of gatekeepers are enough to spoil the name of our country as well okay so they ask this kind of repetitive uh, complete you know useless questions actually which doesn't uh, have any kind of sense you call this as port you call it as interface it really doesn't matter okay so anyway in the linux um, like i uh, discussed in tantap you can create a, a, you know virtual ports through tantap you can create a, a bridge interface um, uh, you know uh, through you know bridge uh, uh, this thing uh, bridge command linux uh, bridge command and uh, so several things are possible so you know these are like virtual interfaces uh, any number of virtual interfaces you can create and uh, you can architect uh, you know the flow of it or else if you are writing your own custom driver you can do that and you can uh, map it into net device uh, data structure you can even create one dummy net device uh, uh, instance and then it will you know show up as one among the you know interfaces actually so it's it's just like that you call that as a port you call it as an interface it really doesn't matter okay and uh, they make a huge fuss out of it and uh, they often ask these kind of questions and uh, when it comes to the difference of uh, you know uh, switch interfaces and this uh, you know interface generally the uh, you know switch you buy in the market uh, is uh, as i said the data plane is uh, done in the hardware the firmware uh, uh, whatever the chip core you know processor is the, usually we call that processor as switch core we don't usually call the you know uh, that um, it's not a processor it's kind of you know it's a, a very specific spga or whatever it is it, it does only that and it doesn't have any os and stuff i'm i'm talking about uh, a very cheap non manageable switch uh, if it is a manageable switch again you will have a switch core and you will have a separate processor uh, it can control the switch core the processor have uh, may have uh, you know linux these days old, uh, long back it used to have vx works and stuff it may have some uh, tiny os um, let it be micro kernel based or monolithic based whatever it is so it may be an arm uh, processor but it does only that you know web interface and it acts like a you know control plane and a management plane it doesn't do any data plane stuff the data plane happens in the switch core and these things will control the same and uh, when it comes to network processors it is a complete uh, you know category of its own okay they will do several things and uh, 
you know these days of course uh, things are changing uh, the network processors used to dominate sometime during um, a decade ago or a little bit you know before that and nowadays because we have this sdn and other uh, stuff uh, uh, we have this nfes and vnfs and stuff like that you know uh, the line is uh, kind of getting blurred out sometimes you do in hardware sometimes you do in uh, software sometimes you do in virtualized uh, layers so it, it really doesn't matter okay so somehow things will be done and uh, you know we can leverage uh, whatever the server hardware we get and we can actually do these things in the software layer rather than once at some point of time it's been done in the hardware layer okay so these days it is quite common whatever done in the hardware layer we are trying to you know do it in the software layer so it itself is a huge story okay uh, when uh, networking started uh, things used to happen this way in the software layer then we moved into the you know firmware or the hardware custom hardware uh, layer we moved the data plane to the hardware and we are now again getting back the data plane into the software layer so it, it's a huge thing i mean you need some amount of exposure and expertise to understand these intricacies but let's not go in depth at least okay when it comes to you know uh, things like that just simplify focus on several aspects which you are supposed to learn and uh, you know someone is uh, judging uh, based on this uh, you know spread that awareness if you don't stand up and voice out everybody is going to take you literally and everybody is going to uh, you know exploit okay i'm myself is a victim actually okay everybody is going to exploit unless Unless until you don't voice out, you will be remaining as a fool forever in this, you know, country. Uh, the moment you move out of this country, you find a job elsewhere. Definitely, your skills, in case if you are good enough, your skills will be appreciated, and they need somebody who can think out of the box uh, rather than uh, you know getting that mediocre mindset. We just need to fill that role in that company of any typical Indian. Uh, you know job screening approach what we you know often see over here okay i am not uh, shy and i am not bothered to you know explicitly talk about these things and let them blacklist whatever it is i don't care about it okay this is what it is okay so spread that awareness understand there are several things when it comes to networking you have to understand you have to learn uh, unfortunately the college background whatever you come it is not sufficient you need to learn a lot of things focus on those things rather than you know some you know silly jargon like this and uh, you know don't waste your time in all these aspects okay again i'm saying if you go to any interview let it be any mnc and if they ask these kind of idiotic questions because as i said i have seen this very often throughout my career and i'm really bugged okay these kind of idiotic questions if anyone asks okay just point them to my channel and ask them to watch and stop this bullshit okay they act on top uh, as if they know everything and then they sit there and then they critically try to analyze your knowledge and stuff it is not they just don't have that caliber that is why they ask this stupid mediocre questions okay so they, you don't become a fool of yourself because of you know a fool is you know judging your talent and your capabilities and these kind of fools act as a gatekeeper and uh, as long as you don't create any awareness uh, these things will continue it is a common practice and it is going to happen everywhere okay so even i myself is a victim i said many large companies i myself is a victim they ask every type of dumb questions and if you give an elaborate answer again uh, it won't enter into their brains because they just want to win, uh, very quick answers and if you give an elaborate answer they again cro cross question and uh, sometimes they feel that uh, if you even more uh, give a generalized answer like what i said it doesn't matter port or interface then they think that i am arrogant or something it is just they are asking idiotic questions as simple as that